Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl Elizabeth, and this is my bro, B. And we're listening to our uh, sports picks from B-Pal Picks. Uh, if you sound like my voice is a little down today, it's because I got my ass handed to me <laughs> over the weekend on ball. But it's, we, we like to brag ourselves up when we're on a roll. And uh, so I got to come straight out and say it wasn't the greatest weekend in the world, but that shit happens. It was a weird weekend, too. There a lot of uh, and actually, I think you were saying you were on Twitter and a lot of that. And it was bad for everybody out there. Wasn't it didn't it? seem that good this weekend in general, especially when you go on four and people are like, yeah, this wasn't I'm just going to move on from this weekend and act like it never <laughs> existed. And uh, a lot yeah. of different things like the one guy said on our site, you see all over the place. Yeah, so, yeah, and I said the exact same thing on my Patreon. I'm going to bed tonight and just going to kind of forget that this weekend ever ever happened. So, But that's okay. It, we can't win. And we're not going to win all the time, but we are going to win most of the time. So we're going to go back at her again. It's the only thing you can do, right? Might as well. And it's all about the fun anyways. If you're betting and it's hurting you and you're angry and you're freaking out, you probably shouldn't be betting. It's all about having fun here, boys and girls. That's what it's all about. Uh, so we're going to go with our ball picks today, and we're going to do one hockey pick at the end of it um, for BPAL picks. Rangers versus Angels. Let's get right at it. What do you think about that game? I think this has been <laughs> two teams way too inconsistent to do anything with. What about you? I agree. Bundy had his first bad start last outing. Gibson had his first great start of the season last outing, pitching a complete game. So, yeah, I, I don't think you should really touch this game. I think it's one, maybe if you want to live bet it, if you're around at four something Eastern and you want to get an inkling of what's going on in the first couple innings. But other than that, I wouldn't really touch it. Yeah. Um, also, with that, the, if you're going to bet it, I guess, might as well bet the dog because nobody really If you want to do it from the jump, yeah. If you want to do it from the jump, I would bet the dog. I think the smartest thing with these two teams, though, is to read what the hell's going on in the first couple innings and then go from there because, like yeah. what you just said, they're so inconsistent. Uh, the only way you should do it in advance is if you have extra money and do exactly what you said, the dog. Yeah, and if you're going to do all that work, you might as well go with our other picks. <laughs> hey. uh, uh, Phillies Nationals, what are we doing there, buddy? Uh, the Phillies should be able to win that one with a very bad struggling. Uh, he's a good pitcher and his whole is a career, but this year he's been very bad and struggling in Anibal Sanchez against Wheeler, who even with a purple haze looking finger, uh, still pitched a very good game last outing. Uh, so he's likely going to do that again. It didn't seem like it affected him to the degree that people thought it would, because he also has a condition with his fingers, so he's used to that happening, just not to that umph degree. Uh, it never happened to that umph degree, but he still dealt with it very well. I would definitely lean the Phillies on that, but, I mean, the Phillies have been inconsistent uh, this year. Obviously, as well, they should be much better than 27 and 26. Uh, so that might be a better one even to just look at as it's going on, unless if you really want to put the Phillies in a parlay and hope for the hope that they actually step up against the Nationals and step up against a very struggling pitcher. Yeah, and not really getting all the greatest juice off of it. Also, the Nationals got pretty hot at the bat yesterday. If that continues on, that might be uh, problematic. And the Phillies can hit. If there's one thing the Phillies can do is hit. And Annabelle Sanchez has been known to give up his runs. So, um you know, yeah, maybe well, slightly. You know, normally we limit our runs, and it has nothing to do with our bullpen. It has to do with the fact that Wheeler and Nola pitch past the sixth inning, and almost everyone else on the staff can't pitch past the fifth. Right, right, right. So, right, like, right. yeah, that's that. No, I mean, the Phillies have pretty good bats is what I'm trying to yeah. say. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe a slight lean to the over there at nine and a half, but I would say very slight. I could see it go either way, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really probably touch it there either. Okay, so we are looking at White Sox versus 
Indians, and we have a we've given uh, paying customers a play on this. So we're just looking at the total. Do you have anything on the total on this one, sir? I wouldn't go after it because the under is pretty low, and I mean Dunning's pitch very good, um, and so has Savali, but. With the when I looked at it earlier, it was at seven and a half. Unless if the line changed, um, yeah. I wouldn't really touch that. Um, could you go under in the first five? You probably could do that. Yeah, that's not a bad play. I just thought about that while you were saying it. There you go, guys. You under in the first five. It's not bad. I might even put that in. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I saw the pitching matchup and I kind of immediately went to my phone. What are we getting on that? And uh, saw the seven and a half, and yeah, I was like you. I was like, eh, not so much. So, uh, you know, here this should be an interesting series, considering what happened with the. It's like pretty much a back-to-back series, almost not quite, but uh, Yankees Blue Jays after Blue Jays lost like everything in the land to the Yankees the last time they played. <laughs> the series. What, uh, what, uh, what are you looking at here, bud? Well, the Jays, of course, got back on track um, yesterday uh, against the Phils after uh, salvaging the final game of that series. Uh, Shoemaker is a pitcher I've always kind of liked because he just knows he just pitches and takes what's given to him um, in that particular ball game. Uh, right now, I can't give you anything because Yankees don't have a pitcher. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they still don't have anything for a pitcher. I don't understand why that is. But honestly, whatever pitcher's in there, I um, the the Blue Jays just can't seem to hit. Uh, they had a they get it back a little bit, and then they're back to not hitting again. Although they did yesterday, so yeah, they always seem like they're coming out of it, but then go right back into not being able to hit again. So uh, it's very too inconsistent for me to bet either way. Um, I would. Personally, yeah, without a pitcher, is probably just faded. Uh, Brewers versus the Reds. We got nothing on this one, do we? No. No. Um, that pitching matchup is pretty much a wash. You got two good guys in Castile and Woodruff going against each other. And also, you got two teams that are competing for the playoffs playing against each other. So someone's going to be screwed after this series, uh, unless it. No, I think this is a three-game series. So, yeah, someone's going to be screwed after this series. Um, so, the that one's too hard to honestly. Like, I was looking at that trying to see if we could put something in. It's it's a team that's been 6-4 and four with a four-game winning streak against a team that's been 8-2 and two in their last 10 but lost and then won the next game. So... That game is like a battle of who's going to be able to figure it out and make the postseason of those two teams, potentially. Because if, if if the Brewers sweep the Reds, the Reds ain't in a good spot. If the Reds come in and sweep the Brewers, the Brewers ain't in a good spot. So it's like, you, that's a series that's too hard to pick because of everything at stake. Maybe after the first game, with if there's a better pitching matchup, it'll be easier to pick that, like a better pitching matchup leaning one way, I mean, because this is a very fun one to watch, but not one to pick who's going to win. Yeah, um, that when you're in games like that or series like that, it's it's almost like you have to pick which pitcher is best going to pitch under pressure and which team is the better under pressure hitters. Um, and I don't really see one lean over the other in that way here. Um, maybe the, I think for I think the Reds for hitting – uh, but if you got to, for me, if I got to think all the way through all of that to make a pick on a play, I just, that's a fade for me. <laughs> yeah. right? So, uh, Cubs versus pirates. We have a play on the total for our paying customers. So, uh, lean one way or the other, as far as the side here, sir. Well, the lean towards the side would be the Cubs. The pirates right. have been very inconsistent they only have 15 wins they're going for that number one overall pick so yeah the Cubs yeah um and you're not getting much juice actually with the pitching matchup I saw there and everything I think it's possible the Pirates could take it I might put a little bit on that but uh I mean I'm not like 
racing out to my convenience store to bet on that for sure. <laughs> uh, I, and I can do that because I live in Canada. Uh, Rays versus Mets. Um, Fairbanks has been pitching really good since he's come up. Pete Fairbanks, uh, he, whatever role they put him in, uh, whether it's uh, starting or um, just in general, uh, the kid stepped up and pitched very well. Uh, this will be his toughest matchup. He's going up against the best pitcher in baseball and Jacob DeGrom. Um, so if there's one game you want to bet on the underdog, I would say it would be this particular game because you got DeGrom even going against Fairbanks. If DeGrom can pitch seven innings, I don't think Pete, who's a swing reliever to starters, going to pitch that deep. So that that could make it lean towards uh, the uh, Mets. The only reason I'm tentative doing that is DeGrom was having a little bit of soreness yeah. when he pitched against us. If he's still having that, that's going to affect that outcome. Mm-hmm. So if DeGrom's DeGrom, I would say the Mets actually can upset Tampa in that game. If DeGrom's like he was last week, they're probably going to lose. So you might want to lie bet that one after the first inning of Jacob DeGrom to see if he's free, loose, and easy. Or if he's pitching like he did last week where you know there's a there's a hiccup in the giddy up. Like Yeah, that's what I was concerned about too. Um otherwise I would have been all over the Mets there. It's unfortunate. It would have been great freaking juice, but a uh, bit of a risky play. You want to take a risk and think that uh, they got whatever was happening with Jagram all fixed up. Maybe you got some insights. Let us know in the comment section what you're doing with all these plays as well. We like talking to you guys and uh uh getting uh we 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 can take we can take all the help we can get not to mention it's fun to see how you guys how everybody picks and how it works tell us what your weekend was like too did you get slammed like we did um if you didn't maybe don't tell us because i don't need to hear that actually but i'm kidding go ahead tell us uh okay we got marlins um we got marlins versus indians we do have a play on this uh we can go uh let's go for the total i guess you mean white Sox and indians or what did i say i think we did the white Sox. i think you meant marlins it was marlins braves, braves. Marlins braves. Marlins. okay gotcha um i mean both of these pitchers haven't pitched how their teams would like yet early on though trevor rogers i at least personally believe is going to be a better career pitcher than i think you know will be a good pitcher i just see him as a three like a three four five rogers in my opinion could be a one two so if you're going off of wanting to gauge young guys then you can pick the marlins but that's a risky bet too so i would just fade that one because gauging young, unless if you really want to say, well, go off of, I mean, I do read a lot of prospect stuff from Baseball America, but I mean, it's just picking two young guys that haven't found their itch yet is not usually something you want to do. <laughs> not for a total anyways, for sure. Uh, young pitchers have been doing really well this year, though. Maybe because of the fans. It takes the pressure off a little bit that the fans are not right there yeah. staring and everything. So, uh, you know, that was something to think about before the even season started. That's uh, uh, definitely, uh, it, it, in basketball, you're also seeing a lot of rookies playing a lot better, way over their heads for probably the same reason. Uh, Cardinals, Royals, and I don't think, do we, yeah, we do have a play on this, though we can go for the side here. We have a play on the total. We don't want to give those out because we got paying customers for that. So, what do you? Uh, Cardinals Royals is a pretty straight play, or what do you I think? would lean towards the Cardinals because the Cardinals are playing for something. Uh, Kansas City is just playing for people to keep their jobs or get another job next year for a good amount of money somewhere else. So, yeah, no, it probably that sounds like a pretty good plan too as well. Um, Okay, Astros Mariners. Do we have? Um, we do Ast- have. We yeah, have. Astros we have. Uh, yeah. So it's only on the total. 
that's risky because McCullers has been struggling this year, but he did bring his ERA down into the high fours now. Um, and he's looked a notch uh, better. Well, he looked really good against Texas. And then uh, he looked pretty good against Oakland a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, I would just... I would just stay away from doing it. Stay away it. from the total on that. Yeah, because they could both come out and pitch very well, which Gonzalez has been doing all year, or McCullers could still have one of those struggle bunny starts for himself. So you have to see what happens. And then we also have a play. This is all the plays you get if you're a Patreon. We also have a play on the final game of the night, um, and that's on the side. So we're looking at a total here. Um Total, I mean, if you're, uh, to me, anyways, if you're going to lean anything on a total here, it would be the over on eight and a half, wouldn't it? I would lean to the over, but um, – and that would only be because in his last seven, Marquez is over a five ERA. Cueto, when his team normally has a chance to make the playoffs, still turns back the clock, and that, like, zones him fully into being somewhat of his old form. Not what he completely used to be, but as close to it as possible. So the over would be, in my opinion, entirely because Marquez can give up with how he's been pitching lately, that over almost himself. Uh, if he comes out and struggles that much, and then you would just need the Giants to give up one or two total runs in the game. Um so, yeah, I would say it's tough. I would say that might be one to also look at live betting and seeing where Cueto's at. Because if Cueto's coming out like as hot as a firecracker, like he tends to do in pen- and not pennant races, but in playoff races, um, then that's going to affect your over drastically. Unless if Marquez comes out like a dog, uh, like he has in his last few games, uh, then you could probably still put that in. I think it's just a risk early with Cueto. Like I would, if you want to put it in, put it in because you think Marquez is going to blow up. I wouldn't put it in because you think Cueto is going to have a bad story. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I would, like I said, I kind of like the over there. I would maybe go, because I Rockies and Giants are both can, can hit pretty well um may put a small play on it but not giving it uh not giving it to our uh, clients at all so that's our ball picks for day we're going to do quick we also have a ho- hockey play if you're asking about the football play if you're thinking about the football play uh we don't really like it um what were real quick what were your reasons for not liking that play well new orleans didn't look like their normal Selves last week and the Raiders are the Raiders. So I don't, I, every time I try to bet on the Raiders, it just doesn't go too swimmingly. So, uh, the, I would rather, uh, figure out where they're fully at this year. They won their game last week. Uh, the Saints, of course, also won, but they didn't win in normal, what you would consider Saints fashion. Um, so if anything, like you say, you might as well give it to the underdog because you're going to make your money there if you think it's a 50-50 shot. But I, I think this game is better to probably live bet it just after the game starts a little bit and kind of see where everybody's going. Yeah. yeah. Um, for early in the NFL, it's probably a good idea. Then we got the uh, exciting NHL Toronto. and or Toronto. What was I saying Toronto for? <laughs> hey, Toronto. <laughs> Jeez. I think my Jays are in my head or something. I don't know. Uh, Tampa Bay and Dallas. Um, what are we looking at? What are we looking at for that, Joe? I'll, I'll have my play on that for sure. Um, well, we put the one in. So, I mean, the goal total is five. Um, that's a risk with how uh, Hudobin's been playing. And um, obviously, they matched it last game. So, it just. It, it was just a wash. Um, if it was five, assuming it was still five last game. I, but the doing that this game again is risky unless if... Because I feel like the way that that's going to get to that goal total would be Dallas winning, personally. Because Hudobin's been so good, and then it would have to be like a four-to-two game 
instead of a four to one game, and then you would obviously get over five. I because of how good Hudobin's been, I don't see him completely falling off a cliff. I could see him giving up three, maybe, but then even if Dallas scores two, it would have to be an over like they would have to be probably an overtime game because. When Dallas comes out early and the other team beats them, normally they don't have as much spunk back all the time. Where Tampa did in the third, but other than that, played an abysmal game. So I think no, because I I just don't I just don't like that play that much. I think it's way too risky until Hudobin, like you were talking about before that we did the podcast, actually shows you that he can struggle because he hasn't showed you one time yet that he can struggle in this entire postseason. Even that game he gave him three goals, he didn't play that bad. They just took him out so he could rest and not just rest physically but mentally again and then just put in Ottinger who looked fine. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't do that. Yeah, um, I think you'll see a different Tampa team this this game for sure. Um, they'll be coming out a lot harder. Uh, I agree, got, but I just I don't know if you agree with me. I feel like the only way to beat five goals is Dallas probably winning or or an overtime win for Tampa. You might be able yeah. to get it that way if it's. Um, uh, I lean the under. I lean the under yeah. on this game for sure. Um, but I lean Tampa Bay to win. Uh, Tampa Bay ML, I can't see them going down 2-0, 0-2, and oh, and but it's it's tough. I mean, when you got a goaltender that's in a zone like like uh, Hudobin is, almost said happy building again, Hudobin is, uh, you never know what can happen there. I'm, he has been, for sure, the MVP of the playoffs, and uh, if that keeps on going the way it is, who knows? Who knows? But yeah. I think Tampa will figure them out tonight. I think the I, th- I like th- I like the opposite of what happened the first game, but Tampa winning like three one, something like that. So that still wouldn't get the yeah. So don't do <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't bet you. <laughs> well, okay, boys and girls, that's our full forty two. That's what we all we have today. Hopefully, you're enjoying your beginning of the week. Um, I'm I've erased my weekend. Now we're going in the beginning of the week. We're going to be nailing picks like crazy. Again. We'll have those numbers back up again. Don't you worry about it. If you need, if you want to find more, if you're just craving more for Boric and I, you go over to steelflyers.com, I'll tell you. And forget about Boric and I, although we'll find all our information over there. That is going to be one heck of an amazing website. We're still working on it. We'll keep you updated as it comes. Wait till you see it. It's going to be great. That's our full 42, boys and girls. Uh, Thanks for listening. Uh, Subscribe, hit the bell, all of those things like you've been already doing. Thank you for that. Um, And have a great day. Lots of love to you.